tuning in to the Lois Banks Show. I'm your host, Lois Banks. Today I have Holland Bivens. He's the co-director of the Betty Detroit Youth Movement um, in the radio studio with me today. And Mr. Bivens will um, open up his heart today and share his passion for developing the youth. But first, I want to give honor um, to the Spirit of God uh, for allowing me to serve you in such a special way. And I want to thank the co-founders of the uh, Impact Radio Network, uh, Bishop Wayne T. and Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson. Um, I also want to give thanks to God for uh, also last week because I opened up my heart. I, I prayed a special prayer of miracles for the listening audience. Um, and the Lord actually blessed my household with two miracles last week. Um, both of my parents uh, could have left the earth last week with something uh, tragic that uh, happened, but the Lord spared their lives, and they're both doing well, and they're both uh, fine. So I just want to give praise and honor uh, for what the Spirit of God did for my own household as I obeyed uh, His direction, um, which also reminds me um, of a story um, that the Lord put in my heart to share about my son. He, he's grown now. I have four children. All of my children are grown except for one. And when my oldest son was um, a teenager, he went to a regular high school and a vocational high, high school. And every now and then I would have an unction to tell my oldest son to make sure he rode the vocational bus to the vocational school. And this particular day, my son was disobedient. And uh, he rode with some of his fellow students to the vocational school. Um, and the, the, the van that he rode in, the young lady who was driving the van, the van um, hit a curb and flipped over three times and landed on the hood. And I always told my children whenever they're in trouble to always call out the name of Jesus because there's power in his name. And my son, who was a, who was a believer in that vehicle, called on the name of Jesus three times. Um, everybody's lives were spared. Uh, they were hanging upside down, um, trapped in their seat belts. And when they were cut out, nobody was hurt. Nobody was damaged. Everybody uh, received a, fle a free clearance of good health. And um, again, I could have lost uh, my son, but God was so good in sparing my, uh, my family's life. So again, I want to give praise and glory to the uh, power, the working power of God. Now, Mr. Bivens, um, Mr. Holland Bivens is the co-director of the Betty Detroit Youth Movement here in the city of Detroit. He has a special passion for uh, developing the youth and working with the youth. And um, I just want to thank Mr. Holland Bivens for coming to the Lois Bank Show. Thank you, Mr. Holland. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mr. Um, Holland Bivens, I was introduced to you through my daughter, Ashley Banks. She actually signed up for your youth development program at Henry Ford High School. Um, my daughter was homeschooled most of her life, but I decided to put her into the school system um, so she can uh, socially develop with peers of her own age. And she signed up for your uh, youth development program. And she told me all about you, Mr. Bivens, and your program. And then I received the phone call from you okay. you introduced yourself to me and you told me all about your program and um i was you know very very happy about uh your program we ended we we made a uh commitment to a meet at your place of uh, business and to di further discuss uh your plans uh for my daughter will you um open up your heart a little bit and um share with the listening audience your passion for working with the youth and developing the youth to walk in excellence Okay, definitely. First and foremost, I want to thank you all for doing such an awesome job, you know, here um, today. And uh, Ms. Banks, you are truly a blessing um, to many. Um, just to kind of give the listening audience a, a, a pretty uh, brief overview, um, my working objective to 
you know, actually work with Miss Mrs. Banks's daughter. Uh, she had a very strong interest in fashion, so um, we connected her directly with a young lady that was on her way to, uh, at the time, uh, New York Fashion Week. And, I mean, Ashley was so excited to, you know, oh, my God, this is my dream. And, you know, so it's, it's, it, it helps me to really understand why the organization was developed. And, you know, God is always good all the time and definitely in the blessing business. And just to have that type of opportunity for a young person to uh, for their passions to meet an opportunity. I think there's something that, you know, is definitely, you know, I don't I don't know how to put it in words because it's it's very exciting. Well, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, another thing that I noticed when I first uh, met with you at your office, mm -hmm. um, you you discovered uh, my daughter's interest and you connected her with um, entrepreneurs who could help her dreams become a reality. And then when you were finished with my daughter, you looked at me and you asked me what projects I was working on Definitely. as an adult. Right. And I told you and then you asked me also, what do I need? And uh, Mr. Bivens, you've been such a blessing uh, to me in my ministry because you don't just work with the youth you work with adults as well yes. and developing adults as well and you were so gracious to me that you connected me uh, with a wealth of resources and I, I was able to book a lot of guests on my radio show through your nonprofit um, organization and I noticed um, uh, a rare, a very rare quality in you, and I, and I called it out because whenever I notice something in people, no matter who it is, um, especially when it's good, um, I will call it out. And so I remember during our first meeting, I said, okay, so God created you to come on this earth and just be a blessing to many people and connect people to um, the right resources. That is such a rare quality um, that's the highly developed in you and that I see in people. Um, as a business owner, I have a, a Christian publishing company. I work with business people all the time. It's cutthroat. Mm -hmm. Even with the people who say they're Christians. I mm -hmm. mean, it's cutthroat. It gets really, really nasty out there with business. And it's so refreshing to actually, you know, work with people who say they are Christ-minded and have the uh, character of Christ on the inside and just want to do good on the earth. Can you open up your heart and mm -hmm. share a little bit about where that development came from I mean did you have like a inspired thought to be highly developed and to obey God at the highest level open up your heart and talk about your path for obedience and where that character development came from okay um, you know oftentimes people say you come here a certain way and I have always been, you know, really solution driven. Uh, my mother at a very young age, uh, she would, you know, do a lot of praying over me and my brothers and, and my family. So uh, prayer warriors is something that's that's been a part of my life ever since I was here. Uh, I think that as far as my walk and as far as uh, the reason why I'm doing the type of work my family has, they've definitely been a community-driven family. We have always uh, identified and appreciated each one teach one. And I think that being humble and allowing uh, yourself not to get caught up in the whispers of the world and, you know, not being jealous or egotistical or territorial are some things that definitely we can, you know, grow past once we get past a lot of the egotistical and territorial issues. Um, <clears throat> I guess I could kind of give a, a, a very brief short uh, uh, story. Yes, please. Okay, here we go. So I will go back to high school. Um, in the 12th grade, I was faced with uh, something that I had seen um, often throughout my life, and it was jealousy. And the jealousy that I speak of was inside of my uh, neighborhood. I grew up in a very urban environment. I didn't have the luxuries of growing up in a uh, suburb. So 
uh, and growing up in an urban environment, sometimes it can be kind of tough. And um, it was maybe a group of people that may not have cared for me in a very healthy capacity, to say the least. So um, I ended up getting a shot. Um, it was it was about two shots, and then the second shot I ended up hitting the ground. And when I hit the ground, you know, I, I got up and I ran to my dad. And my dad had explained to him, he said, you know, I told you not to go outside anyway. And I said, you know, Daddy, you're right. And he said, you know, lift your shirt up. So he lift my shirt up. And he looked and he seen, you know, a bullet wound. Now, you know, parents, you thinking that your parent going to freak out, you know, um, from something like this happening. So what ended up happening is, you know, he lifted up my shirt and he looked at it and he said, well, yeah, you shot. So, you know, I laid there on the ground and, and laying there on the ground. It was a situation where, you know, I just was calming my dad down, although he was not showing that he was very upset. Uh, I said, you know, you did your job. You did exactly what you were supposed to do. You talked to me. You told me not to go out there. Um, so from there, I ended up going uh, to the hospital, and the police came and said uh, later on, well, if you guys know who did this, you know, it's probably all right for you all to retaliate, you know. And I thought that that was a little weird, you know, coming from police officers and things of this nature. So I ended up going back to school. So it happened on a Friday uh, night, and I was back in school Monday morning. So when I went back to school, you know, I shared this experience only with, uh, you know, a few people. And my dad said that I changed. Now, personally, I don't really believe I did a big change like that, but I, he said that I started to become a man. And in doing so, you know, from I guess from that day forward, he looked at me totally different. Uh, my attitude definitely changed because, you know, when you're in high school, you, you definitely go through some chemical things, yes. you know. Yes, yes. Um, and in doing so, it was so refreshing to understand, um, you know, how you can really impact people. And from there, I mean, I just started to develop. I graduated high school. I ended up working into a salon. Um, leaving from working from a salon, I ended up, you know, uh, purchasing my salon and, and purchased other nice things. And then we started to develop a nonprofit organization. And um, a lot of it stemmed from. Uh, a, a, a couple of key elements and, and one is uh, taking out gossip and certain information change how we activate one another I noticed when I started to change uh, how we uh, you know had dialogue with one another <clears throat> it started to change my life dramatically so I start being more informative to people in, in different situations and things of this nature and it started to open up so many doors and some of my dreams started to just, I mean, it started to happen like overnight, literally. Um, from there, <clears throat> I ended up, uh, you know, becoming a, um, an actor and a model. I've been blessed to do a host of different things, billboard ads, been in, hosted in magazines, and currently have a few commercials that's airing right now. Um, and each time I come uh, into a situation or I'm working with a, per a person, my whole thought process is how can I be of service and really actively listening. And soon as a person starts to speak, I can start to think of different resources that can assist them. Yes. And um, I know oftentimes, you know, people, they wonder, like, you know, where, where does this come from? Like, how are you? Why do you think like that? And I think what allows me to really see these solutions is from uh, you know, a very young person, I always ask the Lord for vision in my prayers, a vision, the ability to see. And I've just been able to, uh, you know, through the works of God, you know, be solution driven. Yeah, beautiful. That's such a beautiful uh, testimony about, you know, how the Lord came in and he spared your life and mm -hmm. how you you became an agent um, for change. Um, if you just tuned in, you're tuning into the Lois Banks show. I'm your host, uh, Lois Banks, and I have um, a special guest in the radio station by the name of 
Holland Bivens, and he just gave a wonderful, wonderful testimony about the goodness of, of the Lord. Now, Mr. Bivens, um, you know, when you were shot mm -hmm. and you were going through um, some physical uh, challenges from being shot, um, did God talk to you through that process? Um, how, how was God communicating with you? Was it through his spirit? Was it through you meditating in the word of God? How did you get to the point where you let go of the that uh, that hurtful wrong that was done to you and, and you were able to walk in forgiveness and let it go and then be an agent of change? Well, I think that, again, you know, I go to the statement, some people come here a certain way. I never had a lot of ill will, you know, uh, for the people that 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 did it. Um, I never, you know, I. It, it happens so fast that you don't necessarily you're not not necessarily you're able to kind of really capture the moment and mm -hmm. say, you know, this doesn't I don't deserve to go. It, I never went through any of that. You okay. know, um, I, you know, with, I think when I when I when I heard the the spirit speaking with me, it was definitely when I met my wife. Beautiful. I mean, I think that was. That was something that, you know, sometimes if you explain it to certain people, they might try to give you some medication or something. You know what I mean? Because uh, the, the story is 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 kind of, you know, shocking. It was the breath came over me that, you know, I was going to marry that girl. And I was saying to myself, yeah, right. You know, but beautiful. Um, as far as the spirit talking to me, then, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't that way. Okay. But you did change, and your father, your dad, he recognized the change, and you mm -hmm. yourself know that you changed, and you became an agent of change. Definitely. Beautiful, beautiful. That would explain uh, the characteristics of Christ that I see in you, mm -hmm. the um, the part of your spirit that I see that's highly developed. Um um, in the fruit of the spirit, I see that in you. Um, my, I'm very uh, sensitive to uh, people who who have the character of Christ mm -hmm. because it's so rare. You don't really see it. We see a lot of people who uh, receive Christ in their heart and they say that they are Christians, but you can't see Christ. You can't see him. Mm -hmm. anywhere but I see that um, in you and I also saw it in your dad when I met your father so that is such a blessing that God has uh, developed um, highly developed um, your spirit to such a degree where you want to now reach out be an agent of change and help develop um, the youth of our city and the nation. Um, now, I know you have other aspects of um, the Better Detroit Youth Movement. Can you talk a little bit about your component called GLOW? Yes. Um, GLOW is a female mentoring program um, started here in the city of Detroit uh, to better assist our young ladies. Oftentimes, it's a disconnect from young people and, um, you know, behind those those chairs and those desks at school, they don't necessarily understand how a young person going through all of these types of changes internally, society, you know, putting so many uh, blocks in front of us and all the psychological warfare that's taking place in main, mainstream media, how they can be that powerful young exec. You know, how can they, you know, um, you know, work on anything from how is it that they can get to the next level, you know, uh, and oftentimes that disconnect lies with people not necessarily stepping up to the challenge and helping them. So GLOW is an acronym and it stands for Girls Leaning on Women. And it's a female mentoring program and the young ladies of GLOW have done some very awesome things. We have developed a total makeover challenge. And, you know, they have actually sat down with a host of young ladies to teach them things like, you know, proper etiquette, what uh, what their body type is, is what clothing fits best with them. Are they a summer person, a fall person, a winter or a spring person? And those break down into colors. What colors work best with your skin tone? The color analysis. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I also taught, you know, body language at the Total Makeover Challenge. And our ladies of GLOW have been, have, are now, they're now currently working on an STD, HIV, and pregnancy prevention program. So, you know, our 
work is definitely something that we definitely need to get caught up with. Um, oftentimes, people like to get caught up with other people. My thing is, by all means, let's get caught up with our work. Amen. Amen. Now, you also have another aspect um, to the Better Detroit, D- Detroit Youth Movement called um, uh, fame. Can you talk a little bit about fame? Yeah, fame is a way that we honestly believe that the only way to, to reach a child, um, well, the only way to teach a child is to reach a child. And fame is an acronym, and it stands for fashion, art, music, and education. And through those genres of art, we allow our students to leverage their passions into opportunities so that we can get professionals in front of them to teach them the components of, you know, fashion, of art, of music, and give them that education. And we had a celebratory event over at the high school where they can actually showcase their talents. You know, a lot of the Detroit public schools, the, you know, art is something that's definitely been, been take, taken out. We as an organization understand that art, you know, it helps us in so many ways, conflict resolution, spatial arrangement, and a host of other things, and perspective building. Oftentimes, you know, through art, is so much that we can learn from it. So uh, fame is something that's very dynamic. Um, the Better Detroit Youth Movement is also a nonprofit organization comprised of positive-minded individuals whom are connected and committed with working with students, parents, schools, and other service providers to uplift the quality of life and learning for our city's children. The Better Detroit Youth Movement, we also have the Better, Bro- the Better Baltimore Youth Movement and the Better Brooklyn Youth Movement and doing things on a national scale with the National Black Teen Empowerment Expo. We understand that you have to take care of home, so you you have to, uh, you know, act locally but think globally. It's a is 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 paramount that we understand that this is not just a, a city or a state situation, but you know we have to be prepared to work from a global standpoint. Yes. Now you also um, mentioned earlier today with me that you have life coach teaching. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that teaching and how you, um, <laughs> you know, activate that teaching with your organization? Okay. Well. Um, Life coaching is something that I've definitely had a love for. I've always had a love for psychology and how these things may have manifested is through uh, my work of, of being a barber. You know, oftentimes people always say some of your best uh, therapists are the bartenders and sometimes your barber and, or stylist. And through my experience in working with people, I learned that some of the major concerns are worry and how we address that worry at times. And I think, you know, through some of our um, structured programs, um, like our female mentoring program, and we we have a program called The Why. And The Why is a question and answer form, and it helps us to eradicate a lot of psychological barriers that we carry on a day-to-day basis. And it allows us to, you know, have some open dialogue to get past a lot of those uh, issues that we that we carry you know sometimes I ask some of our uh, students you know if you see a group of white kids running towards you what do you think and the you know the kids they answer they say things like oh well, they they probably running for like a track team or something like that and then I say okay awesome awesome so uh, what do you guys think if you see a group of black kids running towards you and they say Man, it's time to start running. I say, well, why do you say that? So, you know, it allows them to have some open dialogue to see, you know, that thought process. It comes from somewhere. And, you know, and seeing some of that and, 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 you know, working in the community. Oftentimes it's a small shift that we can take that will change our outcomes. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I know you also um, have something called mapping. You took me through uh, the process when I sat down in your office. Can you explain a little bit about the mapping and your goal for that strategic um, information? Okay, so, uh, Ms. Banks, you are a very powerful and beautiful individual. And oftentimes when we get to this, this point where we talk about maps, MAPS is an acronym, and it stands for Multiple Alternative Pathways to Success. 
Now, Ms. Banks, she actually came down to the office. We sat down. We identified a couple of goals. And it's about creating strategic alliances. So uh, in Mrs. Banks' case, she had a, a show that she wanted to kind of get up and running. So what we did is we supplied her with some interns that are interested in the whole, you know, production aspect, you know, be it uh, radio as well as television. So uh, some of our members are, you know, assisting in that capacity. We also talked about what are some of the things that you would like to get accomplished on your show. And hearing some of those things, we created that strategic alliance with people that's actively in the community doing the types of things that she wanted to hear about. So our MAPS program is where we sit down with anyone from uh, be it a youth or YSO, which is a youth serving organization, or YSI, a youth serving individual. And, you know, we sit down and have that dialogue to find out exactly what it is that you are interested in doing. Once we crystallize that, then we can create the map so you, that you can go and grow in the areas that you see fit. Oftentimes, it's a struggle forcing people to go in the area, the area that a person is desiring for another person. So, you know, we just want to make sure that we are, you know, creating stronger, healthy working relationships and really getting past a lot of those egotistical and territorial issues that typically stop us from working well with one another. And um, your uh, the mapping um, was a very instrumental uh, for me and for the radio program and for the as well as the television program. Um, it helped me to focus in on and, and give clarity to me as far as what I needed to work on first, second, third, and fourth. And you were there uh, through the whole mapping process, helping me to stay organized and to stay uh, focused for uh, my project. I have a, uh, you refer uh, quite a few interns to me. Yes. And we have an intern in the uh, radio station now, uh, Mr. Marty Shelton. Mm -hmm. He was referred to me through Mr. Bivens, through the Better Detroit Youth Movement. And he is uh, very, very um, instrumental in helping me to be successful. He's a great intern. Um, he's been such a blessing to me. He's been contacting my guest and just doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. And I thank you, uh, Mr. Bivens, for that and Mr. Marty Shelton and uh, Mr. Bivens for everything that you're helping me with is just such a blessing. Now, I know um, there are a lot of um, uh, families out there in the audience that are going through a lot of different challenges with their children. And I spoke earlier today. Um, about uh, my own son, you know, mm -hmm. being disobedient to me when I told him not to do something. And I said that, Mr. Burns, because the Lord put it in my heart to make sure I shared that testimony today, not knowing that I was going to hear from your own mouth uh, of something that you went through. Um, but God turned it around. He's always uh, very good for turning bad situations around. But I know there are parents out there who are struggling, you know, with their children. Um, they've gone through different situations. What words of encouragement would you give to parents? Well, one thing for certain is the difference in, in talking to a person versus talking with a person. I think oftentimes in the parenting process, we believe that talking to a person is the best way to get things accomplished. You try to cram your way of thinking and how things were when you grew up, sometimes even your own personal insecurities, and that sometimes hinders that relationship from growing. I believe that we must at least come to some enlightened perspective so we can really learn. Um, I've noticed the, mo the more you uh, learn, I mean, the more you actively listen, the more you actually learn. And if we can really create some dialogue and, and, and spend more time listening, I think we would be very effective in parenting. Well, Mr. Bivens, how can um, students or parents get in contact with you in your organization if they want to uh, participate or learn more information about what you're doing? Well, they can send an uh, email over to us at info, I-N-F-O, at betterdetroityouth.org. Um, they can also contact us directly, area code 313-342-0697. Uh, our organization also gives out anywhere from 20 to $40 million worth of scholarship funds every year. 
So we're having a scholarship fair September 25th, and the date is to be announced. And Ms. Banks, I want to say thank you for this awesome opportunity to not just connect uh, you with our youth, but you to other opportunities as well. Thank you, Mr. Bivens, for coming to the Lois Banks Show. And if you want to learn more about my books and my products, you can log on to 